everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So today I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free book review of The Big Lie by Julie Mayhew. I received a finished copy of this book from Candlewick Press in exchange for a free and honest review. This book was released in the UK in 2015, however it's being released in the US with this cover on November 14th. This is a YA dystopian science fiction, but it's also kind of historical fiction, so it's like an alternate history. The setting is Nazi England 2014, and we are following Jessica Keller. Jess is the daughter of a government employee, and so we know that her dad is somehow important as far as the actual Reich goes, but we don't know exactly what he does. When Jessica is a little girl, another family moves next door with a daughter named Clementine, who is her age. And the two quickly become best friends, and this lasts through into their teenage years. However, Clementine and her family are quite rebellious, and they are not okay with the Nazi regime in England, and they're kind of rebels. But Jessica Keller is a good girl. She plays by the rules, she does what her family tells her to, and she thinks what her family wants her to think. So she's having to reconcile this with her best friend Clementine being rebellious and not being a fan <laughs> of the Greater German Reich and also having to start to explore the typical teenage things like sexuality. I'll go ahead and start with my favorite aspects of this novel. I think that historical dystopian makes a lot of sense and is actually probably my favorite subset of dystopians, so maybe like dystopian alternate history, because this is a dystopian that sort of could have happened. I've been kind of picky about the dystopians that I read for a while, probably since I read The Hunger Games in high school, because a lot of them just kind of feel the same. But this is very different because it has a historic context. I didn't realize until I got to the end of the book that Julie May, who has a ton of stuff for research on the Third Reich and Nazi Germany, that she was basing this book off of. I didn't even realize that at the end there's a kind of chart with like German phrases and stuff that are used frequently throughout the book. So I can really appreciate the amount of research that Mayhew put into this to make it kind of like a historically accurate dystopian. So this is obviously speculative, but it is based in reality. I also liked the way this book addressed the question of what does it mean to be a rebel, because there is Clementine who is obviously the rebellious character and who is taking part in really obvious and noticeable acts of rebellion, but are there other ways to rebel? Are there quieter ways? What does it mean to be a rebel? And how do you come about that? How do you even get into the space of thinking like a rebel when you've been told what to think and what to believe and what is true your entire life? So this is really being examined in this book as Jessica has been told what to think and what reality is and now she's having to kind of re-examine that as a teenager. Because why would you doubt what you have always known reality to be unless somebody's actually challenging you on that? I mentioned previously that this book does explore sexuality, but it's also not the main theme of the book, which I can appreciate that it's there, but it's not like this is what the entire book is about. Because in life with people, sexuality is there, but it's not it. I like seeing, I don't want to say casual representation in books because I think that you should be purposeful in how you are representing people, but I also like when it's just kind of part of everyday life or part of their thought processes and it's not made into a huge deal like the entire plot of the book or something because that's how people are. It's just part of their life and identity. And then I already mentioned this, but how childhood messages receive influence our perception of what is normal. If you take a child and raise them in to believe and to think a certain way their entire life, that's just going to be how they view reality or how they view what is normal. So for example, a child growing up in a dysfunctional household would not necessarily realize that there is dysfunction because that is what normal is to them. So it's easy to go into this book and think, well, how can Jessica have these perceptions? And then you realize, well, what perceptions do I have that I grew up being told and believing that maybe I changed my mind on when I got older, or maybe I thought differently. So it kind of helps you to realize that this is a possibility. Even though these are extreme things, it's plausible. So those were some of my favorite themes when I was reading this book. There were a few things that I didn't like as much. There were some aspects of the story that I didn't think really tied together well, and I can't really say anything about what those were but it seemed more like they were just kind of put there and they didn't necessarily fit. That could also be that maybe I was putting my focus on a different part of the story, so it just seemed like that stuff was kind of pushed in. Also, it helped when I actually got to the end of the book and realized that there were German phrases and German words included back there, so 
for the most part they're explained in the story but there were some that weren't that I was just like I guess I don't know what that means and yeah it was there the whole time I could have looked it up but like I said there were some things in the story that I didn't think were necessary for the plot however it is a pretty short book so it's not like it was too detracting and then something else that I wasn't as big of a fan of in this book were the characters I know I mentioned for say Jessica Keller it could be a little hard to empathize with her sometimes just because her worldview was so different from mine but then when I started thinking about things like perceptions of normality I was able to understand her a bit better however it didn't mean that I liked her and also though I could understand Clementine, I didn't necessarily like her as a character either, so for the most part I didn't really like any of the characters as people. It's more of I enjoyed the plot and the themes that were presented, but not the characters themselves. But overall I did really enjoy this book, more than I anticipated honestly after I had started it. Once I got to the end I was kind of surprised by how much I really loved this, so I ended up giving it 4 stars. I would recommend this for people who like reading alternate history because I think this is a cool dystopian spin on it. Also, if you like feminist dystopian, but it seems like there is kind of this brainwashing going on in this that was very not feminist. And then also sexuality as a theme and how it can relate to brainwashing and perceptions of normality, because that is also a theme that I thought was dealt with really well in this book. But that's going to be it for this video. Comment down below and let me know if you've read The Big Lie or if you're planning on reading it when it's released in the US edition. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day. And until next time, bye.